Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to be testing the 140 grain Nosler RDF with Alliance Reloader 26. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. As we mentioned in the intro, the projectile for today is the Nosler 140 grain RDF. This is a bullet we've used before on the channel without much success. However, we're going to change two different things today to see what we can actually accomplish. The first thing is the test platform overall. The test platform for today is a Thompson Center Compass chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll recognize the brake. This is the M4-308 brake by Precision Armament. So technically this is a 308 caliber brake on a 6.5 millimeter barrel. This is a 22 inch barreled rifle. Most 6.5 Creedmoor barrels are chambered with 24 inch barrels. However, Thompson Center Compass chose to make a 22 inch barrel. So our velocity today will be slightly less just because of the barrel length. The other big change that we're going to see here is the powder. Alliance Reloader 26 is a little bit off the reservation when we're discussing burn speed for 6.5 Creedmoor. It is a little slow. So for today's testing specifically, we don't have any exact load data to go from. We will use quick load to generate our load data for today just to make sure that it's safe. Now to say we have no load data is a little bit unfair. We have actually used this powder in 6.5 Creedmoor before with the 135 grain Burger Classic Hunter. That particular combination works great in my Ruger Precision Rifle. I have actually shot a little bit of the reloaded ammunition that I still had left over from that in this rifle, and it shot very well. So even though I haven't done a formal test with a 135 grain Classic Hunter in this rifle yet, I'm very confident that it's going to shoot well. Let's not get too distracted. 140 grain RDF is the test bullet for today. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know my Ruger Precision Rifle just does not like these projectiles. I've tested multiple powders at multiple overall lengths and I really haven't had any luck. And frankly, I just abandoned testing them any further because I just didn't think it was worth the time. However, new rifle, new platform. I know some people are getting reports that these 140 grains will shoot, so hopefully this rifle will be our shining example. Mostly for today's testing, however, we're just going to be looking for pressure, making sure we have safe loads. A little bit of leftover horny brass is what we're going to be using. This will be the second firing on it. This was actually some factory brass from some factory ammunition we've already shot in this barrel. So let's just get into our specifics for our load test today. This is the 140 grain RDF, part number 49824. This is the second firing on this brass, so the first since we fired it. It's been annealed, full length three size, trimmed to 1.910 inches, chamfered and deburred. Our flash holes have been uniformed and we've primed our brass with standard Federal 210 primers. Our powder for today is Alliance Reloader 26. Quick load is where we're going to be getting our charge weights for today. We have actually worked up loads below this already in our Ruger Precision Rifle with 147 grain projectile. Having a lower weight on our projectile as well as the quick load information, we should be fairly confident we're going to be in a safe pressure range for today. We're going to be starting at 47 grains and working all the way up to 49 grains in two tenths of a grain increments. Cartridge overall length will be an interesting discussion point when we get later on after we see the shooting for the video. The cartridge overall length will be loading today is 2.90 inches. It will easily fit in the magazine for our rifle. The cartridge base to O-Drive on that will be 2.263 inches. The important number that everyone's going to want to know is how far are we away from the actual lands. And the answer is very, very close. Our loads today will actually only be about five thousandths off the lands, which is very frequently where most projectiles find accuracy. Though we're skewing the charge weights fairly significantly, we're going to see how well this groups with projectiles that are reasonably close to the rifling. With all those numbers plugged into quick load, let's find out what are pressures we should be seeing today. Starting at 47 grains, the actual pressure that quick load is predicting is 48,206 psi. With that overall length, they're predicting a 99% fill rate. Predicting we're going to burn at least 99.4% of our powder at an estimated velocity of 2713 feet per second. The barrel time that we're going to be looking at is 1.251 milliseconds. Keeping in mind the barrel node that we're actually going to be looking for is theoretically 1.2018 milliseconds for the 22 inch barrel length. At 49 grains, the maximum pressure we're supposed to achieve is 56,217 PSI. At an estimated velocity of 2844 feet per second, our barrel time should drop to 1.166 milliseconds. This is a very full case at 103.2% fill rate. We should burn most everything for some reason it says 99.98% burn rate. So maybe two or three kernels of powder are going to fly out of that barrel unburnt. All that load data discussed, let's go out to the range and see how it performs.
Guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the range footage. Unfortunately, nothing too spectacular. Our overall group size for today was an unfortunate 2.873 MOA, but there's some interesting data here to discuss, so let's get right into it. What I was really most interested in with these 140 grain projectiles is seeing what pressure signs we saw and seeing exactly what velocities we could get. Let's put our velocity chart on the screen. Starting at 47 grains, we achieved just under 2,700 feet per second. Climbing all the way up to our 49 grain max charge, 2851 was the max velocity that we achieved today. Talk about our quick load data just a little bit more. As we can see, our estimated velocity would have been 2844 feet per second, 2851 basically right on top of that. Our estimated start velocity of 2713, we only got to 2695. Still, not a bad estimate there at all. So quick load was right on top of it today. Really impressed with how accurate it predicted. Since it's predicting our pressure, let's take a quick look at our brass and see exactly what pressure signs we saw today. Starting off at 47 grains, really no pressure signs here that it concerns me whatsoever. When we start climbing to that maximum charge of 49 grains, it seems we are getting a little bit more flattened primer. Certainly nothing that I'm scared of here. A slight bit of primer cratering, but primer cratering is fairly normal for this rifle with that large firing pin. But you guys take a look at the brass and look to your heart's content. Now there are a couple things we could talk about. We could certainly throw this rifle right under the bus. We haven't had great luck with our 300 Winchester Magnum Thompson Center Compass. However, we have shot a little bit more ammunition with this 6.5 Creedmoor. And we have seen a little bit of accuracy here. So I am going to throw the bullets back under the bus a little bit here. That it doesn't seem, at least initially here, that our Thompson Center Compass likes these 140 RDFs. Just for reference, we have shot the 140 grain Hornady ELDM. We had a four shot group of 0 0.640 inches and another five shot group of 1.36 inches. No real tuning on that load, just throwing some of our standard loads at it to see what it would shoot. For these Nosla RDFs, I did go back and look at one of another guy I watch here on YouTube. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Johnny's Reloading Bench. After I had load and shot these, I referenced his video on the 140 RDF with H4350, and he actually found better accuracy in his video with his jump well over a hundred thousandths off the lands. So maybe that's what we really need to do. I do have some more of these, so maybe what we really need to do is do an overall length test, give this bullet some jump, and see if we can find some accuracy. Lord knows a 2.873 MOA group is not what we're looking for in this rifle. There's still some interesting data here. It looks like our barrel time for a 22 inch barrel is somewhere around 2785 feet per second which for a 22 inch barrel is still really smoking fast for a 140 grain projectile. Quick time calculates that to be 1.203 millisecond barrel time. Keep in mind the goal would be 1.2018, so 1.202. So right along there, that would be at 48.1 grains and right at 103% fill rate. So still a compressed charge and probably as far as we would want to push the load relatively in this rifle. But for any of you out there that might think about trying reloader 26 with 140 grain projectiles, that's roughly what we can expect. I know I haven't had any trouble hitting these velocities in my 24 inch Ruger precision rifle with Reloader 16. If you guys decide to try it in 6.5 Creedmoor, I guess that decision is up to you. Anyway, even if you're not reloading for 6.5 Creedmoor, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comment section below. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.